Bishos, the Rosh Hashiva Shlita, and Bishos, the other speakers, Rav Shragi Shlita and Rav Lif Shlita, uh, with permission from my father, Zolgazan Shtagzan, and my Shver, and uh, Bishos, all the Rabbanim that are here, and all the support of the Rabbanim that we have here. But Bishos, Kola Kola Kodesh Hazeh. There are a couple of not acknowledgments um, that we'd like to make tonight on behalf of the Tibor uh, for making this evening happen, for making it possible. So bear with me. Uh, I know no one's here to hear me speak, but Hakar um, Satoyev is one of the Asodis of Yahadis. And um, we're going to, we'll be Makatoyev, Meoy Makalev, and then we'll get on with the program. On behalf of the Tibor, uh, first and foremost, we'd like to be makatoiv to the evening Saksanya, to Congregation Shemir Moon, and to the Tzrov of Marwak Shlita. We'd like to thank them for making the hall available and for allowing this Kinus Chizuk to happen. On behalf of the Tibor, we'd like to acknowledge and thank all the Rabbanim for their support, but specifically Rav Hyman and Rav Hafer Shlita for the support of tonight's evening and their Chizuk. Rav Hopper is out of town, but the Rav called earlier to express his enthusiasm and his support and the import in his mind of tonight's event. Rabbis Heber and Berger really spearheaded this evening's event. They are the driving force, and they are the engine behind tonight's evening. Chazak v'yamot. On behalf of the Tzibu, we'd like to thank Rav Mayor Kleiner for organizing this event. Um, may it be a schos for the continued Rufur Shlema for his parents, Bukharov and Menachal Shlita, Bukharov. There are several sponsors who wish to remain anonymous. We acknowledge them and we thank them. And the Tzibur is Makatev as always to Rav Avram Klugman for his assistance with the video, Kadaka Bukhaydish, and to Official for and to the advertiser for their, log their logistical support and their assistance. Obviously, in Melech Bulayam, we'd like to thank the Olam for coming out this evening. Obviously, the more message, the more the message of Chizik gets out there, the more Mechuzik will all become. Yish Yisrael Yazeru, Yochiv Yomer Chazak. And uh, also, just as a, a matter of note, there will be a Marv here after the final speaker this evening. As I, as I said earlier, I'm fully aware that the Olam did not come out here this evening to hear me speak. This is not my event. Talisi is not Torah Mechaveri. I had nothing to do with this. I'm not one of the organizers. I wish I was. I wish I had that schus to have this kind of event any day, but specifically going into the Yimei Adin. But I was asked to serve in this function by a Yid, a very chosh of a Rav, who sat and learned every waking moment of his life and who lives his life entirely for the Rabbanu Shalom and for his people, and yet spends a good portion of his day dealing with families and their issues. If I can be, if we can be, mistabik to that Chacham and to those Chachamim, b'chol mini dibik, as the Rambam says, and that's a schus for us, for these Yimei Adin, Habo Aleinu L'Tayvah. Nevertheless, I asked an Adam Gadol earlier, if I can and I should make the following introduction, introductory remarks, and he answered me affirmatively. I want to tell over a story about the Rashiva Zatal of Weinberg. When the Rashiva Zatal of Weinberg was nearing the end of his life, a bit more than 15 years ago, and I heard this story from the Talmud, who is the Madubar in this, in the, in this story. One of his close Talmidim asked the Rosh Hashiva Zatal about who the Rosh Hashiva considered a Gadol. Who did the Rosh Hashiva Zatal consider a Gadol and who was next in line, so to speak, and who he should ask his shalos to, his succession plan, if you will. The Rosh Hashiva answers the Talmud that there's a certain Torah personality who the Rosh Hashiva Zatal considered to be Mishichmai Ulamala of all the other Gedolim of his time. The Talmud was somewhat taken aback. 
he asked the Rosh Hashiva, what did the Rosh Hashiva Zatzal base his judgment on? And the Rosh Hashiva Zatzal answered that it's nicker from this person's face and his whole Mahal Chachayim that this person hasn't thought about himself in 30 years. That's the criteria for an Adam, for an Adam Badal. Mayrever Abaisai, in that spirit, it's a covet gadol for me to call upon Moreno Rabbeinu Rosh Hashiva Shlita to be mechazek the idols. The Kitzur Shulchan Aruch brings three Ramosim for El, three places where the Rosh Tevis of a series of four words are El, Aleph, Lamed, Vav, Lamed. One of them is Mor Hashem Lokecho Es Levovcho Ve Es Levav Zarecho Es Levovcho Ve Es Levav is Elu. And the second pasuk that he brings is Ani Ledoidi Ledoidi Li Elu. I belong to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Hakadosh Baruch Hu belongs to me. The letters are Elu. And the third pasuk that he brings is Mishlach Monois Ish Ehu Matanis Ladiani. Ish levei ehu matanis levyanim is a rosh tevis elu. Three psukim. Mor Hashem lakecho. One deals with tshuva. Mor Hashem lakecha es levovcho es levav zarecho. One deals with coming close to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Ani v'doidi v'doidi li, which is tefila, which is davening, coming close to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. And the third is sedoka, which is the pasuk of matanis mishlach monos ish levei ehu. In other words, Tshuva, Tfilo, Tzdoka, or Mohumas, three places in the Torah that are Maramez, the Elul, have the Psukim, which deal with Tshuva, Tfilo, Tzdoka. Well, Tshuva is an, is an understanding, understandable way of preparing ourselves for Rosh Hashanah. Tshuva is getting rid of our Avedas. Yemadin, we judge for our Vedas, we do tshuva, our Vedas, we change the mitzvahs. That's the obvious way. Davening to HaKadosh Baruch Hu Tfilin, Anila Daidi Vidaidi Li, is certainly a way to come close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We ask for Rachamim, we ask that HaKadosh Baruch Hu should deal with us in a manner which is beyond what the judgment, ordinary judgment, would call for. Why is Mishlach Monas Ishleyehu a, a Rosh Hashanah of Elu? How does that prepare us for Rosh Hashanah? Giving stock is always a good mitzvah. But why Daf is it a preparation for Rosh Hashanah? Why does it fit into the Elu, the month of Elu, which is all a preparation for Rosh Hashanah? The tendency is, the answer is, that Rosh Hashanah is a time of malchus. Rosh Hashanah is a time of accepting the sovereignty, the malchus of HaKadosh Baruch. <coughs> There's one thing that stands in the way of that malchus, of accepting HaKadosh Baruch as a melech, as a king over ourselves. That is, there's a competing king and that king that's competing with HaKadosh Baruch Hu is ourselves. We go through life usually 
thinking of ourselves as the king, all that matters. But that is the direct hefech, the direct opposite of what we should be doing as Jews. As Jews, we have to bring ourselves to recognize that there's a rabbinish level that we're avoiding. We have a king over ourselves, not that we are the king. There's a Gemara that describes the fetus, the womb of its mother. There's a whole description, perfect description of what a fetus looks in the womb of its mother. And it ends by saying that the fetus crouches on its knees, sits on its buttocks in its mother's womb. The Maral says, why is that so? Why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu make that a fetus should crouch, should be sitting on its knees in, in a mother's womb? Maral says, because that's really what a person should be doing his whole lifetime. His whole lifetime, he should be kneeling. The fetal position is really what is the tachlis, the purpose of a person. That he should bow down before HaKadosh Baruch his whole life is here to bow down, to subordinate himself to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Not, to, not to make himself king. That is why it's stokin. Mishlach Mons Yishra'elu is Elul. It's the preparation for Rosh Hashanah. Getting ourselves out of the focus of our lives, thinking of another person, devoting ourselves to stokin, to caring about someone else. That's the Yisod. Of El. We live in a world where the values that surround us are all self centered, they're all centered around the person. The government is there to, to ensure our rights. We can, we, we can, a person can do whatever he wants, except maybe litter the environment. But really, you have a right to do whatever you want. The society is built on an extreme self-centeredness. The only thing, that pe the only religion that people believe in is the religion of autonomy, that a human being can do whatever he wants and he has a right to do whatever he wants. We live in such a society, and the Torah tells us the other way, that our tachlis is to bow down to HaKadosh Baruch Our tachlis is to serve others. Our is not to be self-centered. There's a conflict. The biggest tragedy is that we not, we're not aware that it's a conflict. There's a conflict. The tragedy is we think that as a Jew, we have the same value system as the world around us. We have to mix with the culture around us. We have to work. You know, we, have to, we have to interact with people around us. We can't isolate ourselves in the world. But we have to know that as a Jew, we walk to a different drummer. We have a different, different motivating force in our lives. We are not like Glee. Without disparaging them, but the, the, the fact of a Jew is someone that's makabel of Malchus Shemayim, someone that strives to accept the sovereignty of Hakadosh Baruch Rosh Hashanah is a time when man was created. Hayom Haras Olam, man was created on Rosh Hashanah. And, and what happens when man is created? The day of his creation. What is he expected to do? To say Hashem Melech, Hashem Moloch, Hashem Yimloch, Leilam Poet. That's what the creation of man was for. Lo Ovdo Lushomo, it says in the Pasuk. When Odom Elishim was put into Gan Eden, it says he was put there to Ovdo Lushomo, and Chazal say, Lo Ovdo Zemitsus Asei, Lushomo Zemitsus Leita Asei. He was made to do mitzvahs, he was made to serve. That's the definition of man. We live in a world where everything is the hepach of that. It permeates everything we do. It permeates the way we think. It permeates the way we raise our children. It permeates the way we think. And we have to be constantly on guard. 
to make sure that that value system of me, where I, the capital I, is the center of the world, has to be rejected. It's the beginning of being a Jew is rejecting that attitude that life is here for myself. This is what causes so many problems, shown bodies, difficulties in marriage. There's one reason why difficulties in marriage come about, because everyone wants to be king. Everyone thinks about himself. Everyone would think about the other. There would be no problem. In every area of life, when we educate our children, Do you know that it's very rare to find a household where children are educated by telling them no to something? I wonder if any of you, how many of you, have ever told their children no, unless they're burning themselves with a fire or something, but to train them, to tell them no. We always ask them, would you like to eat breakfast? Would you like to come home? Would you like to wear this? Would you like to... Everything we do, we train the children that the center of life is themselves. They have no obligation. We, we, we're afraid to give them obligations. We're afraid to help them, give them chores in the house. We're afraid because maybe they rebel against us. The whole society is selfish. We want them also to be a member of that society. The way we raise our children is affected by the me generation, by the self-centeredness. <coughs> Vilna Gaon says that he compares Tume, spiritual uncleanness, the opposite of Kedusha, the opposite of spiritual purity. The opposite, in other words, whatever drives us away from HaKadosh Bohu, from Hashem. That's spiritual impurity. The Vilna Gaon says, spiritual impurity has a chariot, a chariot by which it runs through the world. And the chariot has wheels. The wheels are represented the wheels represent the different ways people behave. Lying, flattering, speaking Lush and Hava, joking through life. Four kitas of Shainam Rain Pnashkina, the don't see the Pnashkina, Hanofim, Shakovin, Sapi Lush and Hava, Laitsonin. That's the wheels of the chariot. And what is the throne? What is the chair of the chariot? It's guided is selfishness, self-centeredness. That's the chariot. That's the, that's the driver. That's the one who's in the chair that sits on that chariot. And who's the driver of the chariot? Who sits on that chair? That is Taibo, physical pleasure. In other words, what's the thing here? That what makes Tumen operate, what makes uncleanness operate, what distances us from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, is our self-centeredness, our guide. And what does that cause? That causes that we should occupy ourselves with our taiva, with our physical pleasure. So a society that's self-centered has to be a society that is occupied with physical pleasure. It goes together. Klal <laughs> Yisrael has these opposite Yisraelis. The Jewish people is the direct opposite of this. What the, what the culture of the world around us says is success, we say is a failure. Akino, Vataibo, Vakovet, Maitzinus, Odin, Elam. We say that jealousy, competition, being better than someone else, coveting someone else's property, Taiba looking for physical pleasure, Kovet looking for honors. These are things that destroy our lives. And these, if you ask anyone what's called a success in the world, in the culture around us, they'll tell you, Kino, Taiba, Kovit is success. 
So we have to realize that we have a different take on everything. We can't let the, the culture permeate our lives. Because we are not self-centered, therefore our lives are not centered around tithe also. We have a thing called Sneus. We have a thing called modesty that no nation in the world has. In the 15th century, there's a book written about it. In the book, there's a Jewish character mentioned. And that character is described as being a woman who is extremely modest. That was the symbol of a Jew in those days, in the 15th century. This value of tzniyus is something that we carry with pride. It's the definition of being a Jew. If someone who lives a life of tzniyus, his personal life is not devoted to fulfilling his pleasures. And the women have a value of, of covering their attraction to men so as to help men control their time. That value permeates our society. Clothing the front people wear, tight, short, shade left they wear, little girls, everything, everything is the culture of the world that says, I am the meat king and therefore I can do whatever I want and enjoy myself whatever way I want. So tzedaka, right, that one thing that represents El, tzedaka, one of the three things, has ma very many ramifications. It means that we can't be selfish, and it means that we can't indulge in our pleasures for the sake of pleasures. Chizuk, that we need, we have a beautiful community. Klaliso is an unbelievable nation. We have survived through history because we've always walked to another drummer. We've survived because we had different values. We never mixed with Goyim. Used to be unheard of in a Jewish community in Europe to invite a guest speaker who is not Jewish. Now it's quite common. <laughs> we cannot identify with a culture that says that selfishness is the main thing and therefore time is the main thing. Pleasure, fulfillment is the main thing. Kali so lives a cut above the rest of humanity, it's always lived that way. And now the greatest insight that we have, we're grateful for the nation that gave us so much freedom and democracy and, and tolerance and ability to practice our Vedas Hashem the way we have the Messiah to do it. We're, we're very grateful for the nation that permitted us the system of government that permits it. But it doesn't mean that we have to assume the values of that, of that nation. The values of that nation will cause us to disintegrate. What keeps us a nation is separateness. Chazal say, Voyo machanech kodesh. If the machane is not Kodesh, the Ar-Machane is not Tznius, then Mishrov Me'acharecho, then HaKadosh Baruch Hu leaves us. There's no Shekhinah, there's no Siyat Rishmai. There's once a community that I visited once. It was an Orthodox community, which had a series of horrible happenings, Ahman Mutzlan. Young people were getting sick, some dead, died. Other tragedies happened in the community, and he came to me. 
And they asked me, what, what, are, what are we doing? What are we doing wrong? We're governing, doing everything possible. Why is this gzer upon us? Why does HaKadosh Baruch Hu give us this gzer? And I told them, which shul do you daven in? They said, plenty, this is this shul, I said. What kind of mechitza do they have there? Very, very weak mechitza. I said, it says in the Torah that where there's no tzniyus, shol nacharecha, HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't visit this place. HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't come into that shul to hear your tefillahs. Shol nacharecha. What do you expect? Start off by making a decent mechitza in a shul, a decent shul, and then keep it. Change your lives. Start dressing tzniyistic, acting tzniyistic. It's not just the dress, but the way, they act, the way we act, interact with women. It's important. You shouldn't be talking to someone else's wife familiarly in a familiar fashion, the way so many of us do. There should be a barrier. There should be a barrier between men and women. Is the most serious form of arayas. How can we permit ourselves to break the barriers between Ish and Ish and us? It can't be. It's like make a loisha, you can't joke with an Ish and Ish. You can't wink at her. You can't break the barriers of Tzniyus. Shog macharecho. The Shekhinah is not with us. The Shekhinah is yearning to be with us, but we push it away. We tell the Kodesh Baruch Hu, you don't come into my house. Can we expect the Kodesh Baruch Hu to come into a house which is not sneezing? No, it doesn't come in. That's what the Torah says. Shor Macharecho. This is this is all a product of a lack of stock. Because stock is a symbol. Lack of giving, lack of kindness. Maybe we should start our stock with our wives. You market toiva to them. Show gratitude to them for what they do for us. Give them COVID. Not to be demanding that they should give us COVID. Not to have to be right always. To give in. We don't have to be a ruler. We don't have to be in charge. We can start with our homes. We can start with avoiding a sikhsuch with our wives. Ah, that would be, that is the biggest stoke. I said stoke b'chaleis, I'm a fanas ishtu v'onav. Certainly I said stoke b'chaleis, someone who has shown bias. That's a bigger panos. This is the preparation for Rosh Hashanah. One word, one idea. Removing the competitor of HaKadosh Baruch Hu for sovereignty. That competitor is our selfishness. And to work in mischazik, in giving, in caring, in kneeling before HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We don't kneel, but the idea of kneeling like a fetus, our tachlis is, is, is batlus to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, is batlus to Ratzon Hashem. Davening, everything that a Jew is, is batlus to Ratzon Hashem. And it expresses itself in our attitude towards our physical pleasures, to our tithes, Expresses itself in the tzniyus that we have in our society. Expresses itself in every area of our lives. 
But it's one idea. We are not in charge. Our tachlis is to be Abdi Hashem. You'll think it's a very gloomy, sad picture. Rebchatzka Levenstein was the mashgiach in Ponovish. I met him many times to sit next to him. The, he was a very serious person. He was a David, Kron Glasses, Kron Glasses, Rebbe. He was a mashgiach in the Mir a very serious person. He's frighteningly serious. Always thinking what to do, always had his mind and what's right and what's wrong, how to improve himself. Someone, a Bacha once asked him, I suffer from sadness, depression. Could you give me some idea how to overcome depression, how to overcome sadness? So Chatzkel told him, I can't help you because I never had a moment in my life where I wasn't happy. Yeah? A serious person who's always working on himself, learning Musa, demanding from himself, never had a moment in his life where he wasn't happy. <laughs> this Kabbalah Salmachu Shemai makes us happy. Try giving to your wife. Try giving in. Try telling her that she's right and not you, how happy you'll feel and everything. Try controlling your taiva, how happy you'll feel. It's a secret of happiness. You won't have a sad moment in your life, in your lives. This is the preparation <coughs> for Shoshoneh, for Kabbalah, and Machu Shemayim. Getting rid of the competitor. Yakarish Bochu Benchas, which we say that Emes and Tshuva Shleimon, and Dveikus and Yakarish Bochu, and an ability to be mamlich others over ourselves and not be mamlich ourselves. That way, we'll be safe all of us. Ksilo vachsim etoyve, yagulish leymo, mehero